Welcome to the Daily Five for Monday, March 4th, 2024. You likely saw some headlines talking about the uproar over the announcement and then denouncement and massaging of the possibility that Wendy's, the fast food chain, might implement some version of surge pricing when it came to their food items. And for those who may have missed this, there were apparently some comments from the Wendy's CEO that were interpreted, according to Wendy's, interpreted incorrectly, as some thoughts on experimenting with having food items where the price would be variable. So if it was a busy part of the day and there was a lot of traffic, the prices would go up. Very similar to what like Uber does with their cars. In fact, that's the comparison you're often going to see, Uber-style surge pricing. And this very quickly got a lot of negative response from people who were fans of Wendy's and the company then backed off of it and said, no, 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 everybody got it wrong. If anything, what we're looking at is actually lowering prices at low traffic times to try to drive more interest and increase sales. Now, I don't have any doubt that that part is true, that they are looking at lowering prices to try to drive traffic. But I also do not for a second believe that they are not looking at the other end of the spectrum to raise prices. It makes complete, well, it makes complete sense if you look at it purely from one perspective. It makes no sense from another, but we'll get to that in a minute. Because one of the things they could do is if they increased pricing, depending on how they did it, that is a nice, easy way to not have to hire as many people because you can lower the amount of traffic for people who are value-driven. They just won't come to your restaurant. And so you will have less people, but you'll be making more money on the items that are sold. And what that means is you can employ less people and you can actually probably start laying some people off if you can massage that into the right ratio. You can get it right there. And from a business perspective, that makes nothing but sense. It really does. And the lowering prices means that if you have staff that don't seem to be doing enough work for slower times, you can even that out as well because you can increase traffic to whatever extent you want. And now those people are being, they're doing more work for what you're paying them. So from a business standpoint, Variable price, pricing makes complete sense. The thing that's stupid about it, the thing that doesn't make any sense is, and I don't know if this is just a specific American thing. This may be because I live in the U.S. and maybe it's not like this everywhere else. People who live outside the U.S., feel free to tell me if it's different where you are. But in the U.S., almost any of these fast food chains, it really doesn't matter which one, Wendy's, McDonald's, Burger King, Carl's Jr., Jack in the Box, Taco Bell, whatever, they almost all are placed in, in areas where there are other fast food locations really close to them. In fact, the Wendy's closest to our house has a McDonald's on one side and a Taco Bell on the other. And when I say on either side, I mean that I could take a cheeseburger from Wendy's and throw it and hit the McDonald's or the Taco Bell really easily. And I am certainly not a major league pitcher. So let's say Wendy's does this. They have some variable pricing that starts going into effect inevitably their competitors are going to do the same thing. And what they're going to do is it will become this kind of race to the bottom or the top thing where the other places are going to try to lower their prices just enough so that they're more appealing than Wendy's are or raise them, but keep them just short of how much Wendy's is raising them to again, attract the value driven customers. And I don't know how that really works out in the long term because you're just going to be continually slashing each other's prices and cutting into the margins. I mean, obviously they only go so far, but will this really be worth it for the disruption and the traffic that will move back and forth? I can't imagine that. Certainly there are people who are loyal to certain fast food chains. I guess they count on some percentage of that, but that's true of all of them. So again, that's almost offset. So this feels like it is a completely spreadsheet or you know accountant driven type of incentive thing where they said, oh, we know how we can make sure that everybody that's working for us is doing as much work as possible and that we don't have to hire anybody extra and we could actually probably start laying some people off if this works. That's where it feels like this comes from. And of course, the CEO is the one who made the comments and CEO's jobs are to try to squeeze every single dollar out of whatever they are doing. This does not feel like something anybody with any ground level experience would say is a good idea. I don't know whether it's going to happen. They've backed off for it now, but that doesn't mean anything. They could still implement some version of this a year from now after people have forgotten about it. Or maybe they know that other chains are thinking of doing the same thing. So maybe this will be a common standard approach to doing fast food now, which it just, it just doesn't make any sense. But it's just going to lead to a gas buddy app for fast food, I guess, where you'll load it up and grease buddy will be the thing that comes up with it. If anybody takes that, I'm trademarking the name now. So I don't know. I'd be curious your input. Good idea, bad idea, because this just seems really stupid to me. Later.